Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Kitchen Design Experts. This is a channel that tells you all you need to know about kitchens, kitchen design and kitchen appliances. Now today we're going to talk about the humble kitchen sink. But in actual fact it's not quite so humble, it's a very important part of your fitted kitchen. Now when we go to people's houses to design kitchens, do a design consultation, we have a list of questions and one of those questions refers to the sink. So what do you ask your clients on that first visit about their kitchen sink and their requirements? I mean, to be honest, I don't really delve into it that much for that first visit because there's obviously so much information we need to gather to at least give it a first design. So to begin with, I tend to keep it quite simple. Just keep it to do a, a single bowl, a bowl and a half, maybe even a double bowl. And if you want stainless steel, maybe a coloured sink, but leave it at that because further down the line, once the design starts to come together, then yeah. amongst sink and other things, we start to really get specific about certain items then. I think it is such a big subject. Really, there are three elements that you have to consider when you are choosing your sink. There are installation types, there are the different finishes that you could have the sink made from, and then there's the overall design of the sink, how many bowls, what style it is, etc. And so that we don't just overload you with information, we are going to break this down into three videos, being those categories, installation types, finishes, and different styles. Yeah. Um, and today we'll be talking about the installation types. Now, just as a quick word of warning, uh, a lot of the references we'll be using today actually refer to a brand of sink called Franca. The only reason that we're doing that is for the past 40 years, those are the only sinks that we've sold. So our knowledge of those sinks is pretty good. But obviously all the other makes such as uh, Karen, Shock, uh, Blanco, they will have the same type of sinks as Franca, uh, and, the, and we're not suggesting for one minute you just home in on the Franca range of sinks, but they'll be used as a point of reference. Uh, I would just like to say that if you are interested in our videos, of course, we'd love you to subscribe. It really does help us an awful lot. So like we just mentioned, today's video is going to be on installation types, and there are three main installation types. The first one being surface mounted that sits on the surface on top of the worktop, then there's flush mounted that, believe it or not, is finished flush with the worktop. And then there's under mounted, of which I'm sure you can guess where that is being, underneath the worktop. So here we have a diagram that explains the three different types of installation. Uh, if you look at these diagrams, the blue bit is the, depicting the worktop and then the black grey bit shows you the profile of the sink. Now on the left hand side you'll see what they call top mount or surface mounted sinks and you can clearly see that the lip of the sink sits on top of the actual worktop itself. In the middle the under mounted sink uh, that goes actually underneath the worktop and as it joins the worktop it's then stuck to the worktop and sometimes they'll seal it with a bit of silicon all around the edge. And then you get the flush mount where the actual worktop has to be rebated out here and that sink then sits into that rebate and it actually sits flush to the actual top of the work surface. Now when you're choosing your sink and you're looking at sink brochures, uh, the kitchen sink companies themselves usually show similar pictures to this to tell you what the sink you're looking at is capable of doing. Now if you look at this particular one here, this is from the Franca brochure, you'll see that this particular sink can, if you look at these little uh, diagrams here, be either an undermounted sink or indeed a flush mounted sink. So onto surface mounted sinks, there's a, a couple of different versions. One would be your normal sink, whether it's a bowl, a bowl and a half, and it's got a drainer attached to it, and that's all sat on top of the worktop. Or you can have it now where you, you don't have the drainer at all, and it's just the bowl itself that's on the worktop. Uh, you can have any type of worktop with a surface mounted sink, but it's worth noting that if you are going for a quartz worktop, or a corian worktop, or granite, or anything like that, then usually people take advantage of being able to have an undermounted sink because there are other pros to having that, of which we'll discuss very shortly. We actually have a surface mounted sink in our showroom, so let's go and show you that now. So this is an example of a surface mounted sink set into a wood grain laminate worktop from the top. So basically we cut a hole out of the laminate and we actually set the sink into it from above. This happens to be a black large bowl small draining board sink. As you can see here, there is obviously a lip. 
Now that lip stops you from wiping anything off the worktop directly into the sink. And if there's any problem with surface mounted sinks, that lip is possibly it. The actual seal where the sink comes down to the worktop is quite good. However, you can still get dirt and residue food stuff caught in that edge. But the reason it's quite a decent seal is there are clips all around this sink that you tighten up from underneath so you can pull the sink down to make a pretty good seal all the way around. Now there is another sort of surface mounted sink which has got a slim fit edge and we have one of those around the corner. Follow me. Right, this is a surface mounted sink like the other one we just showed you but the main difference is the edge of the sink which I'll come to in a minute. This particular sink happens to be a big single bowl with a single draining board to one side. Uh, it's stainless steel finish and it's sitting in a Fenix based worktop. Now we haven't talked about Fenix as a worktop surface at this stage but in some future video we will be bringing it to you. Now if we can focus in here then on this particular edge what you can see is that it's a much shallower, thinner edge than the last one that we showed you. It is still though a definite lip, so it's still very difficult to brush things off your worktop into your sink because there is a lip there and actually the seal down to the worktop in my opinion isn't as good as the previous surface mounted sink. The reason for that is you cannot use the clips with this sink that you use on the other one. You have like spring toggles all the way around the sink and you push the sink down into the sink cutout and the spring toggles hold it in place. But it, you can't tighten them so it sometimes can leave a little bit of a gap if you can get your fingernail in underneath. Another word of warning about these slim fit sinks is that because they are fastened with these spring toggles you have to make sure that the sink cutout is the exact dimension it needs to be otherwise the spring toggles don't fit properly. Sorry to interrupt the video but I have some very exciting news for you from Holtz Kitchen Design Experts. Now many of you have contacted us and asked us to help you with your own projects and I'm delighted to say that so far we've successfully helped quite a few of you. So much so that we've decided to launch officially an online service. What this means is that you can now take personal advantage of what amounts to well over a hundred years of design and appliance experience. You can access that now because what we've done, we've created uh, three different um, packages, if you like, to consider different budgets, different requirements, and also considering whereabouts you are in the world. So you have access to that right now. All you need to do to learn more completely without obligation is email us at hello at holtzkde.uk. I'll leave that link down below. You know, there really never has been a better time for you to finally create your dream kitchen and we would dearly love to help you to do that. I hope to speak to you soon. Okay, back to the video. So undermounted, like we, we've mentioned, this you can't have a laminate top with undermounted but you ha can have virtually any other work top in there. And, and we mentioned it's, it's glued from underneath. So really, if, if you did duck down, you'd be able to see the glue underneath yeah. the worktop, but not many people are, are doing that. And on that note, in the past, we've had somebody say, can you change our sink for us? And we've had our fitter jumping up and down in that sink, trying to get it off. So it is very strong glue. Not a pleasant sight. No, 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 no. Um, and when they're, when it's being installed, we will, I would leave it at least 24 to 48 hours for the glue to set before your plumber starts to do any kind of work with it because when, he, when he's twisting things it could very slightly twist the sink in. Um, now these are some pictures of an undermounted sink. So yes, this diagram shows you different methods of actually fitting your undermounted sink. There are only slight differences but they do make quite a difference. We'll start with the one on the right hand side. Now if you look at that, the worktop completely overhangs the sink. 
so that in actual fact you don't see any of the top lip of the sink at all. And I've got to say that this is the one that we use 95% of the time. Uh, the middle one is where you get the actual sink virtually flush with the cutout in the worktop. Now that's, that's all well and good, but unless you are so precise with the cutout of that worktop, sometimes you can start to see a slight disparity. And therefore this is not something that we advise our clients to go for. Now the left hand one, uh, this is where you actually see some of the top part of the flange of the sink. I genuinely don't see the point of this one because it's just forming yes another ledge for you to have to clean. Uh, there is only one reason for having this and that's because some undermounted sinks have certain accessories such as colander bowls or draining board lids and they need a little ledge to sit on and that's I can think the only reason for going for uh, that left hand design. So really the one on the right where the worktop overhang the sink is the one that I would genuinely go for all the time. Now this is actually a Belfast sink, not an undermounted sink, but the principle is very very similar. The only real difference is you see the front edge of the Belfast, uh, whereas with an undermounted sink it's a square cutout or rectangular cutout. Now you can see that the sink itself is mounted underneath the worktop because you can see the thickness of the worktop here all the way around. This happens to be a quartz worktop but it could be granite, it could be solid timber, it could be corian. Now this quartz is 20 millimetres thick. There are of course thinner worktops and there are thicker worktops and you will see this edge all the way around your sink. But essentially one of the main advantages of the undermounted sink is if you have any food residue or anything on the worktop at all you want to wipe into the sink there's absolutely no lip whatsoever to stop you from doing so and that's one of the main advantages of an undermounted sink. Now we are generally asked, as undermounted sinks are usually just the bowls only, we're asked what do you do about the draining board. Now on this particular display, the draining board grooves are actually grooved out of the solid surface material. So if it's quartz or granite or corian or solid timber, this can be actually achieved and the draining board is actually part of the worktop. However, in our opinion, in practice, it doesn't really function that well as an actual draining board. Water can tend to get everywhere and it can come off the front edge of the worktop onto the floor or onto your cupboards. Now there is another solution for that, especially with quartz and granite, and that's called a recessed draining board. A recessed draining board is in this picture here. Now basically what that is, this is showing a half recess uh, and you can see that around the actual draining board grooves there is a sunken well. We can do a full recess where that sunken well goes all the way around the sink and that's very effective at stopping the water from running over the front edge of the worktop. This is another undermounted sink that we have in our showroom. Now this is a full undermount, it's not a Belfast as you can see, it is set into its own recess within the entirety of the worktop. Uh, this happens to be a grey fragranite sink single bowl the reason I wanted to show you this one is it shows you that you can have all these different thicknesses all the way around an undermounted sink. This particular worktop is just a 12mm thick ceramic worktop so you have a much thinner edge all the way around and if you colour coordinate the sink to the worktop that edge is by no means as pronounced as the previous one we showed you. Finally, flush mounted sinks, where believe it or not, it's completely flush when you rub your hand over, which does mean, like we talked about already, being able to wipe things into the sink and it not getting stopped by any kind of lip that's lifted up. Now, the way in which to, to achieve this can be quite difficult if your joiner is doing it on site to a laminate worktop, say, because you have to be so very precise in cutting out that little rebate so that then it perfectly lines up so that you don't start to get any tiny little gaps because obviously then you will be brushing things into those tiny little gaps. Uh, we, for example, to avoid this, our worktop manufacturer does it for us on the machines so that then we know that it's going to be absolutely precise and, and fit perfectly. 
All right then, so here's another picture. This is a picture of a flush mounted sink in a granite worktop. Now that's, that's a, a perfect picture of a flush mounted sink, but something we need to point out. When you do a flush mounted sink in quartz or granite, you then can't use the uh, actual drain of bore grooves that we've shown you before, because they would only run up to where the rebase is on the, on the sill of the sink. So they won't actually work. So if you're having a flush mounted sink in granite or quartz, it can be worth considering having getting a sink that's also got its own draining board rather than you having to groove one out in the work surface. So like we mentioned earlier, when we first meet our customers, we tend to have a, a quite quick conversation about sinks, but then it does turn into this rather lengthy conversation, as I'm sure you can tell by just this one third of the full series we're doing on sinks. And that, that's one reason why we done this series of videos and other videos because it actually helps our clients uh, go through the process of understanding all these choices available to us as well as us telling them they've got this actual resource at home that they can go through and we really hope that not only does it help our clients but if you're going through buying a fitted kitchen yourselves at the moment that this series of videos will be a great help to you fingers crossed it will be so anyway that's it for today I hope you've enjoyed what we've had to show you. And until next time, it's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. Bye-bye. Hello and welcome. Welcome to the Kitchen Design Experts. This is... <laughs> is, that it? is that what's been tickling you all along? Over to you. Did you talk about the three different videos then? You told me not to no, I didn't. list them. You Take four. Yes. The battery's not running out, is it? No. All yeah. the specificities of... Specificities. Specific. There's a second time I struggle yeah, with that you, word. You, you do all the time. Uh, before we actually start... No, we, we can't carry on. No. Why not? Oh, I was so clear I just forgotten what I was talking about. If it's mounted, where your sink fits on top of the worktop, there's flush mounted, where it kind of is very flush with the worktop, and there's under mounted, where it's underneath the worktop. Get away, get away. <laughs> Stop you. Mm. You're banging on the table.